Nigel Richards is already by far the greatest Scrabble player of all time, but he just did something completely incredible even by his standards. In November 2024, he won the Spanish World Scrabble Championship. The twist? He doesn't speak Spanish. He already has five world championship titles in his native tongue of English, and almost a decade ago, he stunned the world by winning the French language championship, another language he doesn't speak. But his Spanish language win might be his most amazing accomplishment yet. There are so many mind-boggling things about this, but let's start at the beginning of this year's championship. Unlike English language championship events, both French and Spanish offer a single player Scrabble event called Duplicate. Every player is given the same set of tiles and attempts to find the highest scoring play they can within a few minutes. Duplicate eliminates the luck factor of Scrabble entirely, though it also eliminates the strategic element, reducing the game to simply scoring points. At the Spanish language championship, duplicate spans three full games, after which the player who loses the fewest points is crowned the winner. The live streaming coverage tracked the results of six prominent players, including four former Spanish language champions and Nigel. Keep in mind that word definitions are never a factor. Players simply need to know which combinations of letters are allowed and which aren't. Native speakers normally have a huge leg up towards mastering their Scrabble dictionary, but as he already proved with French, Nigel is the furthest thing from normal. Still, nobody knew exactly what to expect from him in his Spanish language debut, and in duplicate game one, after two correct moves, Nigel made a big mistake, submitting an invalid word and earning a devastating zero for the turn. Maybe he misread his letters and hoped to play Danina for 69, but it's impossible to know for sure. Defending champion Benjamin Olaizola was the only one of the six featured players to find the 60-point top move. Seemingly unfazed, Nigel rebounded with a streak of perfect moves heading into this position, where the top plays of Yagare or Yagase scored 44 points. Nigel found the word and the spot, but he miswrote the coordinates of the move as D4 instead of the correct D8 and took another damaging zero, giving him over 100 points of penalties in game one. The second duplicate game featured four bingos in the first six moves with only two players spotting all four, 2019 champions Serge Amig and Nigel. On move 7, it seemed like the top move would be the overlap of Kunda for 35 points. There was only one better move available, the extremely difficult find of Bayadona, a 9-letter word through 3 disconnected tiles. Incredibly, Nigel was the only featured player to find it, recouping some of the points he lost in game 1. As game 2 proceeded, Nigel found top move after top move and eventually finished with a perfect score of 997 points, the first perfect game in the history of duplicate at the Spanish Championship. In Game 3, Nigel was one of just two featured players to find the early top move of Exaudir and was the only one to find the tricky Chatungo, using the blank as an N and hitting both double word scores. The rest of the game had slightly easier moves and Nigel once again finished with a perfect score. Had he written down his coordinates for Yagase correctly, he would have won. Instead, he finished a narrow runner-up to three-time former champion Luis Picciocci. Regardless, his record-setting performances in games two and three were astounding. After the team-based Copa Naciones the next day, where unsurprisingly there weren't enough Spanish-playing New Zealanders for Nigel to have a team, it was on to the classic event, featuring traditional one-on-one -on -one Scrabble games. Duplicate proved that Nigel knew the dictionary to his normal standard, but Scrabble involves much more than just learning a list of words. Understanding strategic concepts that differ greatly from language to language is a critical part of the game, and this was Nigel's first ever Spanish. Spanish language competition. For example, take the letter set. These are the 100 tiles in English language play grouped by letter type. In Spanish, almost all the tile values are the same except for the Q, which gets docked from 10 to 5 points. With so few Ks and Ws in Spanish, they're removed entirely. Similarly, the F, V, and Y go from two copies down to one, with a few more tiles removed from the low scoring consonants. 
three I's are removed in favor of three additional A's, and two C's, one D, two S's, and an O and U are added back in. Lastly, the biggest difference is the inclusion of the accented N and three digraph tiles. Nothing like these exist in English. Together, these changes shift Spanish away from midpoint consonants towards high point tiles and vowels. The varying size of the different Scrabble dictionaries is also critical. Compared to English and French, Spanish has significantly more 7, 8, and 9 letter words. For those unfamiliar with Scrabble rules, playing all 7 of your letters earns you a 50 point bonus, so these opportunities are much more plentiful in Spanish, majorly changing in-game strategy. Many of these longer words are inflected noun and verb forms that might be natural to a native speaker, but not to Nigel. This creates a significantly higher burden of memorization for him than French. Finally, individual letters have different properties in different languages. Thanks to the cutting-edge Scrabble AI, Macondo, we can approximate individual tile values based on how much better or worse than usual you'll typically score with racks containing that tile. Looking over these values, you can see that vowels are extremely powerful in Spanish language Scrabble, especially the A, which is featured in a number of important inflections of both nouns and verbs. In English, you'd almost always want to avoid duplicated A's, but in Spanish, AA is an extremely powerful combination. On the other hand, with Chi not being playable in Spanish and its score cut in half, the Q is even more difficult to use and goes from a bad tile in English to a downright awful one in Spanish. Memorizing the dictionary is impressive enough, but internalizing all of these changes in your first ever tournament in a new language would be absolutely inhuman. And yet, after day one, Nigel was in first place with a perfect 6-0 record, averaging an insane 566 points per game. Starting on day two, he would play the rest of his games on the live streaming board, and he put on an absolute show. After two more wins in rounds 7 and 8, including a move where Nigel appropriately hooked Nickel to play his only available bingo of Zigotos, he faced off with defending champion Benjamin Olaizola. After Olaizola's opening, Nigel can play Pina or Pañi for 51 points, but in classic Nigel fashion, he opted for Pañi to set up a powerful spot for his ex, and after an exchange, he immediately cashed in the spot for 67. Olaizola managed to bingo with the Q for 98 points, and after a balancing move from Nigel, he bingoed a second time with Messaria to take a lead. Nigel had responses that even a casual Spanish speaker might spot, like Arriba for 66 through the open eye. Instead, he spotted his only playable bingo of Sabrosa for 84. Several turns later, with a consonant-heavy rack, he played the stylish Runico through disconnected letters, an improvement over Unico to shed one extra consonant and draw an extra tile with both blanks unseen. After Olaizola's logo, he drew into a bingo of Alinden to seize the lead, but after Zedas put him behind again, Nigel was in a tough spot with no easy access to a triple word score. Simple two-letter plays like Ye for 38 seem obvious here. Nigel found something entirely different, extending Dad on the board to Trinidad, scoring well and again using more tiles to snag those blanks. In the nick of time, he drew one. And he had a slew of bingo options through the O of Runico. But he played Cotejes for 86. This move makes what looks like a dangerous A hook for Akotejes, but given Nigel's lead, Olaizola's plays in that spot won't be enough points, and if he bingos instead from the O, Nigel is likely to draw an A and use the spot for enough points to stay far ahead. Olaizola made a great play in response, blocking the spot with only two tiles to preserve his chances of drawing bingos. Amazingly, Nigel used his knowledge of Olaizola's tiles to correctly determine that the only available bingos in the endgame are through the O of Runico, such as Botiero or Cotiero. He made the best endgame play of Alafa, leaving Olaizola without a playable bingo. After the last few moves, Nigel won a thriller, 515 to 417. 
Nigel continued to make incredible moves in nearly every game. In round 10, he made the stunning extension play of Balasearias, an 11-letter word, following up with an 100-point bingo from that same A of Ahormais to seize command of the game. In round 11, Nigel and Richard Velazquez were neck and neck until Richard's play of Cerca, which Nigel answered with Yalones hooking a Cerca for 105 points. With another win in round 12, Nigel finished day two with a perfect 12-0 record. After two more blowout wins in rounds 13 and 14, in round 15 against former world champion Rocco Laguzzi, Nigel took a late lead with the bingo of Escorare. With two tiles in the bag, Rocco played Ope to try and draw a bingo, and he succeeded. Silboso fit hooking Unos. Nigel had ways to block it, including the engine choice of Toro, but he made an odd-looking choice of just low for only two points. This play just barely manages to block the bingo, but more importantly, he uses up just one of his tiles in preparation of being stuck with an unplayable cue. By holding on to the rest of his tiles, he'll ensure that he wins the game by a greater margin than the engine's original suggestion. In fact, after hours of processing time, Makondo does eventually concur that low is the best endgame move. Just to be clear here, Nigel came up with moves that the world's strongest Scrabble engine takes hours to verify in his first ever tournament in a language he doesn't speak. In round 16, Nigel opened the game with four straight bingos, adding several flashy overlapping plays like Bife and Rezos. With two more wins in rounds 17 and 18, Nigel's record remained perfect entering the final day of competition. In round 19, already up by over 100 against two-time former champion Iron Perez, Nigel had no 7 or 8-letter bingos available here. He did have one 9-letter bingo here of Dejection, which of course he sees and plays for a shitload of points. Plays like this and Balasearias make it unclear what the limit of Nigel's Spanish word knowledge really is. Finally, after another win in round 20, he faced former champion Serge Amig in round 21. With a small lead in the early going, Nigel had six vowels and an S, and with plays like De Soya available, he made the surprising play of Ore for just nine points, leaving four vowels behind. This would be insane in English, but Makondo concurs with Nigel's choice, and sure enough, on his very next turn, he bingos with Akohiese to surge further into the lead en route to a comfortable win. This round 21 victory brought his record to a perfect 21-0, four games up from his closest challenger. With only three more games to play, this meant that Nigel Richards had clinched victory in the Spanish World Scrabble Championship. He did go on to lose one game to 40th place finisher Maria Rosario de la Cruz, bringing his final record to 23-1. and Nigel's average score in the tournament was 539 points to his opponent's 412. He averaged 3.6 bingos per game to his opponent's 2.3 both a function of his otherworldly memory and his incredible strategic intuition, knowing exactly what letters to play to maximize his chances. Amazingly, in the 15 livestream games we got to see, he drew 14 blanks. This suggests he wasn't even getting particularly lucky. In those games, he missed zero bingos, did not play a single invalid word, and played 15 flawless endgames. His opponents, who accounted for eight Spanish language championships between them, had 11 turns where a bingo was available and did not play one, seven turns where they played a bingo but a better one was available, four invalid words played and challenged off, and six out of 15 flawless endgames. So now that we've established what Nigel Richards just did, a few words on how and why. Even established grandmaster players in other languages can't really wrap their heads around the how. For me, maintaining my command of English words up to eight letters in length requires constant upkeep. I couldn't even imagine attempting to learn one other Scrabble dictionary, let alone two, including one that's significantly larger than usual. The idea of winning a Scrabble championship in a language you don't speak will get the headlines here, and rightfully so. It's a staggering feat of memory and mental agility. 
But as a tournament player, not knowing the meaning of the words you play is actually closer to the norm than the exception. For example, Thai players who don't speak English that well have won the English World Scrabble Championship. Nigel's memorization in Spanish is incredibly impressive, but what really gets me is Nigel's ability to somehow make perfect adjustments to the differences in Spanish language Scrabble play at his very first Spanish language event. He was routinely making plays like Ore that kept extremely vowel heavy racks, exchanging tiles more proactively with clunky consonants, and generally playing as if he had played Spanish Scrabble for decades. He's known not to own a computer or analyze his games, so we can only assume that he's doing this by intuition alone, which is truly otherworldly. As for the why, Nigel doesn't do interviews and is notoriously nonchalant about his motivations, but I think this one isn't that complicated. Once you master something, it's time to move on to the next challenge, and Nigel's results in English and French suggest that he certainly mastered Scrabble in those languages. So will he move on now to German, Italian, something else entirely? Who knows? I could make a million videos about Nigel and he would still be a mystery, shrouded in a conundrum, wrapped in an enigma. After his latest incomprehensible feat, we can only sit back and wonder what's next.